hello, hello. Welcome to my table. I'm not sure you can find a place to sit at my table, but you will be well fed here. You'll be well fed. So today's the first day of school. Today, uh, Dave goes back to teaching. So he teaches Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays, Chloe's back to college. Tuesdays and Thursdays are going to be mine. All mine and yours, because you are gonna come with me on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and we're gonna just do stuff because we can, because we have the whole house to ourselves, and I am thrilled. So last night we had a major, everybody cleans their room and does their laundry party. And they were actually really good about it. They had serious nerves, like first day of school, jitters. So everybody was looking for something to do and that worked really well. So we have like beds made, clean clothes, clothes hung up, put in drawers. You can actually see their floors. I told them if everybody got everything off their floors, I would vacuum their rooms today because it's gonna be that kind of day for me today. We are gonna be cleaning today. Oh, I should tell you what this is. Hold on. Okay, I, I know everybody does this a little bit differently, but basically what I do is I put citrus peels in white vinegar in a jar, and this is just a constantly filled up, ongoing jar. Um, you can use lemon peels too, you can use a combination, that's probably ideal. So what you can do is, in this, in this case, I do half vinegar to equal amounts water, so half and half. I usually don't fill this jar all the way. Um, this will last me for a very long time. And then I put a tiny little splash of like a Dr. Bronner's soap in there, and that is what I use to clean. Um, I don't have a good sense of smell, but I can smell this. It's like clean, it just smells it just smells clean and I really like it. Um, probably if you had a stronger sense of smell, you might really touch on the vinegar notes, but this is what helps it stay less. Um, the other little trick you can do is you can actually take one of these peels out and you can use the peel to clean something. So. So let's say this was like particularly dirty or gunky. I could actually use this peel, almost like a little scrubber or washcloth and kind of just work it in there. And then I can come back and wipe that. See what I'm doing, little peel? And what happens is you get a really clean surface when you do that. It's pretty amazing. Uh, and then this just goes in your compost bin. So you can probably see at the end of the table, I washed all my dish towels, all my scrubbing cloths, and I just wanted to set myself up for success today. I wanted to just, like the dishwashers, everything got in last night. I unloaded them this morning. Counters are mostly clear. I'm gonna give the island a really big wipe. And today we're making fritters. Fritters are my secret weapon for garden, harvest, produce, fresh eating, and preserving. It's like a one-stop, get all your ingredients out and just make a ton of stuff. So that's what we're gonna do today, but first we gotta clean. So there, there's no chemicals. This is totally, totally safe. So I do know that people make these big jokes about like having so much zucchini, they hide it in neighbor's mailboxes. I don't have that problem. What I have is a squash bug, cucumber beetle problem, and they devastate my plants. And I maybe got, maybe got on the best plant two zucchinis. Um, my yellow summer squash was doing okay, but it's not anymore. So I went to the farmer's market and I got these. I think I still have one of my own in there. Um, I got this monster zucchini. This particular farmer's market sells their monster zucchini every year. Um, I probably paid way too much for it. It was a dollar a pound though, so whatever. It, it is what it is and I get to make fritters, so I'm happy. Um, I have these two gorgeous squash. So all of this will just get 
grate it up. I feel it's important to just be honest with you that um, my brain just is not orderly and <laughs> and I kind of struggle. I love making home, but I do struggle with it. It is, it is a process for me that is, uh, it's like a puzzle that you keep trying to put together and it doesn't fit no matter what you do. And you don't know if you're missing pieces or you just can't figure the puzzle out. That's basically what it feels like to me, my brain. We are going to grate an entire summer squash. And I just do it right in the bowl. It just seems to make more sense. I do the whole fritter just right in the bowl. All the ingredients, grate them up. And then I, my favorite is this yellow squash with golden beets and some really beautiful little salad turnips. And I just grate everything together. I don't measure a thing, but I will do a little measuring just so that I can get somewhat of a recipe written down for you on this. So I'm not gonna make a giant batch, I'm just gonna make one batch so that we can measure. So I'll probably use like four of these little turnips. If you have a big turnip, just use one. Um, this is always very scary for me because I have lost a lot of fingertips. So I can't really go too much further than that. The turnips smell amazing. I don't know if you've ever smelled a turnip if it's been grated or cut into fresh. It is just, I, I don't have a good sense of smell, so as I mentioned, and so anything I can smell, I'm just so grateful for, and turnips are one thing that I can smell. They must, there must be things like that are on a certain, like, scale of no scent notes. I don't know much about that, but I do know there's different notes of scents, like in perfume. And I must be able to smell like one certain note, and it's usually bad stuff, like things that smell really bad. I'm not gonna like be too totally careful about removing the skin, but I do find that beet skin can be very bitter and it can really change the flavor of things. Like I'm not, I wouldn't put that in my stock um, because I would worry that that would make my stock really bitter. And it's just a, a preference, but you know, I've had like a red velvet muffin once with beets that were, that had the skin on and it was one of the most bitter things I've ever eaten. But if you take the skin off, that just doesn't happen. So I tend to do that for beets, even the golden beets. So let's see, we'll do like two beets. They're probably, these would be considered like medium sized beets. So I did like three or four small turnip salad turnips. I did two medium sized beets and one really large summer squash yellow summer squash and you can again you can use anything you want to use I watch all these beautiful videos with like this great photography and like these like scenes where they're like chopping the vegetables and it's all beautiful all around and I'm like yeah yeah not here <laughs> not here my friends not here this is just the real deal. We just want to grow beautiful food and eat it. <laughs> All right, so there we go. We've got the base of the fritter. So now you can either grate in onion or I am going to, because I have them, just finely, finely dice some of these spring onions that have been begging for me to get out here and use them. So I would probably do like one small onion if I was grating the onion. And I'm using, I think this is like three or four, maybe four green onions. I'm gonna use the green and the white. And I'm just gonna go through and give that an extra chop. Oh, and, and feel free to add garlic. My goodness, feel free to add garlic. I'll go get some garlic. We'll add garlic. 
So I've got my scrap bag here, and this is where I keep everything that's gonna be for stock. So I've got celery, I've got the ends of the summer squash, I've got the green onions, um, I'm not going to do the beets and I'm not going to do the ends of the turnips just because they're like dirty. The flavor would be great, but that's kind of dirt. It's my like beautiful choreographed chopping scene on my wooden cutting board in my beautiful homestead kitchen. <laughs> no, just reality. All right, now it's all very simple. Fritters are the simplest thing ever. I just make it look really complicated because I'm complicated, but they're super simple. Let's measure. We've got one, four, and a generous five. So, okay, so it's about five, six cups, depending on how you measure it really. So it's, this is a good five cups, we'll say here. Okay, so I'm gonna do two eggs. I'm gonna go ahead and get the eggs mixed in. I like to do this before I add any flour. And then I'm gonna season it with some salt and pepper. I'm gonna start with just, it's not quite half a cup, a little bit over a quarter cup. I'm just gonna kind of toss that in. I can always add more, but you can't take it out and you don't want this to become dough. You're just trying to get a little bit of a batter with the egg and the flour so that you have something to create that, so the fritter has something to kind of stick to. But mostly, this is about allowing the vegetables to sing. Like this is how you're showing off your beautiful summer harvest or the food that you've been able to get from the farmer's market, this local, fresh, gorgeous, seasonal harvest. This is how you show off to people or how you just make a beautiful, beautiful breakfast or brunch. You could serve this with some sausage for breakfast. That looks about right to me, but I'm always willing to add a little bit more flour. So that's why I didn't add that full half cup. Just wanna make sure first. So I usually do a tester and I make sure that the tester is seasoned I taste it, I see how well it cooks up, how well it stays together. So we'll do that together. Right, so we have a very high smoking pan. It shouldn't be this hot, but I'm just gonna go with it. You do want your cast iron to be really hot before you ever put anything in it, or that's when everything sticks to it. People think cast iron is so hard to use because they get sticking, and it's just because your pan wasn't hot. If your pan is hot and well seasoned, you will be fine. All right, so this is probably gonna cook fast because it was so hot, but I'm squishing it down. I'm making it nice and flat. And this is my tester. Um, it might need more flour. So that's why I'm, I'm making sure to do a tester. This is getting a little brown on the edges. It, it's because this pan was super hot. So um, this is a bad representation of a first tester, but better that it happens on our tester in our full batch. So this oil will calm down. It won't stay this hot because I turned it down. You can have a paper towel lined plate if you want. I don't have any paper towels. I try not to use them. I'm just gonna check the other side of this uh, just to drain the oil. But I just, I find that putting it on a plate is fine. You do want it to cook because we've undercooked these before and it's been like, eggy and kind of raw tasting in the middle and you really want to get that middle cooked. So I'm just going to give this another minute. So I did go ahead and add that extra little bit of flour. So that brought us to half a cup of flour and added a little bit more salt. It seemed like it needed a little salt. Get that mixed up and then we'll go ahead and make some fritters that hopefully won't burn this time.
Now, even though fritters are about highlighting the vegetables, really it's the sauce that you put on it, the like aioli sauce. So I just, uh, this is a mayonnaise jar that I made. It still has like leftover, just a little bit of leftover mayonnaise from the last time. But basically I put two cloves of garlic chopped into this jar. We're going to put, doing this with one hand is so ridiculous. Oh, I did it, no shell. We're gonna put one egg. One cup of avocado oil. I'm gonna do a teaspoon of lemon juice. Um, I might end up wanting more. I do like it pretty lemony. Maybe I'll do two teaspoons. I'm gonna do two teaspoons. I'm going to add two teaspoons. Whoa, kinda went a little crazy on that. Two teaspoons of lemon juice, but I don't actually know what's in there because it all spilled. So we will find out. Uh, salt to taste, whatever you like. Some pepper to taste. And then a tiny bit of honey. I know I should measure this, but I, I just kind of make it up every time I do it. I'm guessing I do a half teaspoon of honey, about two teaspoons of lemon juice, as much garlic as you want. And then I add about a quarter teaspoon of dry mustard, maybe not even quite a quarter teaspoon because I don't want it to be mustardy tasting. But it does give it some depth. And then you take your immersion blender and you put it in your jar and you do not move it in the beginning. And then what you have created is this gorgeous aioli sauce or, you know, it's a beautiful mayo. Is that beautiful? So I only do this if I have fresh eggs. I don't use eggs from a store. Um, if I can get farmer's market or, you know, backyard eggs from someone if I don't have my own. Otherwise, I just don't do it. I, I think you gotta have a fresh, good quality egg for this. It's gorgeous. So this is what you eat on your fritter. You take your fritter, you take your sauce, and you are so happy that you made these. So good. All right, so the first one was burned. I'll show you these. I burn a lot of food. These are perfect. Nice and golden, a little crispy on the outside. They're just so good. So I'm just finishing cooking them on this side. Give them another minute and they're ready to go. This video was all over the place. I'm very unfocused because, as I mentioned, it was the first day the kids go back to school. Oh my gosh, this is so good, you guys. If you don't even make fritters, just make this. I just eat it off the spoon, because it's that good. All right, anyway, clearly I'm all over the place. I'm gonna go try to focus now, get all this food preserved, get some stuff in the freezer. Ooh, garlic. Ooh, garlic, garlic, garlic. Whoa, garlic. I just got like, whoa, garlic. Whoa, garlic. Okay, make sure the people you love eat the aioli sauce too. Am I still a mess? Sorry. All right. That's it. It's fritter day. I'm all over the place. First day of school. So happy to have my space to create and be. Okay. Thanks for being here, even on my most... Thanks for being here all over the place with me. <laughs> Appreciate you.